Good morning. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Pastor May J.G. Gibbons Sr., broadcasting from On Wall Ministries here in Alton Vista, Virginia. We thank God for you joining us on this morning for our Sunday School Hour. We thank God for each of you uh, taking the time to uh, get into studying God's Word. God's Word, he said that without the uh, studying of God's Word, he said that without the knowledge of God's Word, he said my people will perish. So we thank God for you having a desire to get into his word, and, and we are just so grateful you joining us this morning. We see some people parking in this morning on this hour. We're getting to you uh, out of um, King James Version of our standard commentary uh, this morning. Our study lesson is Lesson 8, uh, April the 24th, and this morning we're going to talk about freedom in the king. Uh, coming out of the Gospel of John. Uh, chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Freedom in the King. Out of our lesson this morning, hopefully we will be able to glean a few facts. Our key text this morning comes out of that 36th verse of that 8th chapter. It says, that if the Son therefore make you free, you shall be free indeed. So we're looking at freedom in the King this morning. Our uh, study series on this quarter is God Frees and Redeems. Unit 2 study is liberating the gospel. Out of our lesson aims this morning, we want to identify those two referred to as the Father with the capital, talking about God, and then the Father with the small uh, F, which talks about uh, Abraham. It's the difference between uh, uh, the Father and Father. It also explain the nature of the freedom that is made available to us through our darling son, Jesus Christ. Uh, then create a list of ways to continue abiding in Jesus in every area of your life. Uh, let us look at our lesson this morning. Our scripture reads this morning out of the uh, Gospel of John, 8th chapter, verses 31 through 38. Verse 31 says, Then said Jesus uh, to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, and then you are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Verse 33. They answered him and said, We are Abraham's seed, and we've never been in bondage to any man. And how says thou, ye shall make us free? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And then verse 35. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Uh, verse 37 says, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word has no place in you. And our last verse this morning, verse 38, I speak that ye which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen with your father. So we're looking at these Two comparisons between the two fathers that uh, are represented in our text this morning. So hopefully as we get into our scripture, we'll get a, a, a better understanding of this freedom that God gives to us through his darling son, Jesus Christ. Let us bow. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, this morning for this opportunity to come. And as we come, Lord, we ask that you would endow us from wisdom up above. Touch us with your divine Holy Spirit that we might be uh, embodied with that wisdom and knowledge and understanding of your word that as we teach it this morning, we will also apply it to our own personal lives. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. This is our prayer in Christ Jesus' name we do pray. Let the household of faith say amen. Amen. In our introduction this morning, we're talking about Freedom Day in April 27, 1994. Uh, the South Al uh, African government allow the people to express their own freedom through elections. All of the post years of apartheid and, 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 and that nation uh, uh, governed their people with, with, with uh, segregation and, and restrictions that were put on them because of, of the racism that was in South Africa at that time. But in the early 90s, about 50 years of that uh, discrimination and unjust practices that they had, they negotiated with the government and the people of South Africa, whereby they will be able to remove those uh, uh, apartheid era restrictions that was upon them. As a result, the, 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 it, it offered them free elections to be able to. So in 1994, millions of newly 
uh, uh, enfranchised uh, South Africans voted for this new government. And, and, uh, and freedom can be looked at from four angles when we look at it as we study our text this morning. What is freedom? So those four angles that we're going to look at freedom this morning is, and those who have freedom and, and know it, and, and then those that lack freedom and, and they know it, and then those who have freedom, but they don't realize it, but then those who lack the freedom, but they don't know it. So you got those people that, that, that have freedom and know it, and those that don't have it and they don't know it, and then those that have it and don't realize it, but then you got those people that, that don't have it, but somehow they don't know they don't have it. So they think they're free, but you're caught up in the bondage. And this is where we find the people of Israel this morning. They were, they thought they were free, but they were not really free. They did not have that freedom that is offered to our darling son, Jesus Christ. So four various words that we're going to use in our lesson this morning. We're talking about freedom, then liberty, and, and they are us. Uh, uh, synonyms that, that, that occur many times in the New Testament indicating the importance of this topic. We need to know which of these four categories are we in spiritually in our own personal lives. Uh, are, are we free and know it? Do we know the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus? Or do we lack the freedom and we just don't know? We're caught up in it and don't realize it. And then those that have freedom but we don't realize the freedom that we have that is offered through us through Jesus Christ. And then uh, we have, uh, our, uh, we don't realize it. We are caught up in, into, uh, into a bondage that, that, that we don't understand and we don't realize. And, 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 but we don't know that we are caught up into this bondage that we're in. We, we think that everything is all right. But Jesus is offering to us today a, a way to become free from the power and the penalty of sin that is uh, in our lives. So we talked about it on Friday evening a little bit. Uh, that, that freedom that he offers us. Uh, we have freedom and we have a resource that will give us the power over sin and the power over the penalty of sin. So in our text this morning, we're looking at John. Uh, the other three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they're synoptic Gospels. But John is a little bit different. John varied in the way he approached certain uh, things in the Gospels from a certain angle. Uh, John always talked about love, and he, he approached it from the love perspective. And, and the other uh, three Gospels were more detailed in what they were doing. But John focused on the thing that will bring us into a, a better relationship with Jesus Christ. So John is uh, very different in his approach. Uh, he, he had some um, examples in his writings that were not in the synoptic gospel. Uh, John talked about the bread of heaven, the bread of life. He referenced to Jesus as that bread. And, and then John, you've got to realize John was the one that says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John was the love one that related to in his uh, way of uh, uh, representing or interpreting the gospel. So John's gospel note uh, has this special relationship that he had with Jesus. John was of those who were closest to Jesus. So in our text this morning, this long discourse places us in Jerusalem at the Feast of the Tabernacles. This observance was important celebration that uh, was set during the time of Moses. The feast began on that 15th day of the month of Tishra, which is the late September and early October. The significance of this day is twofold. It celebrated the end of the harvest season, but also it commemorated God's provision of Israel while they were in the wilderness wandering around. The feast provided a backdrop to Jesus to express his divine identity by using these items that are mentioned, water and light, uh, to let him know that he is that water that will feed us when we are thirsty, but he is also the light that will direct us when we are in darkness. He's trying to let us know that we need things that will bring life, but also that will bring and illuminate the goodness and the graciousness of our Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. So we're looking at that today. Then additionally, uh, it says that on each night of the feast, except during the Sabbath, these uh, uh, oil lamps were lit in the temple court of the women. Against this backdrop, 
did Jesus proclaim himself to be the light of the world. But whosoever will, will follow him, they shall not be in darkness, but shall have the light of life that will present to them a way of getting away from this, this bondage they're in because of sin. But Jesus proclaimed himself the fulfillment of Israel's messianic hope and speaking the words of his heavenly father. Now we get into our discussion, Jesus speaks. Our first study, a word and discipleship. Verse 31, and Jesus said to those Jews that believed on him, if you continue in me, in my word, and then ye are my disciples indeed. Here the Jesus is focusing on the teaching that Joe's Jews that believed on him. Their belief was due in part to many of the miracles and the teachings that he had done. But Jesus questioned whether they had true belief in, in, in he that sent him. Do they truly believe that he was sent by God or should uh, they look for another? You remember what uh, John the Baptist said? They came to Jesus and said, are you the one or should we... Look for another. We had that a few weeks ago. And they said, what? John said, uh, uh, Jesus told his disciples to tell John that, uh, have you seen healing? Have you seen deliverance? Have you seen people being fed? Ha have you seen those that are captives by, by demons? And have you seen them being set free? So here he is saying, because of the miraculous acts, many of those believed on him, those Jews. So he says that, if you continue in my word. See, many times it's not us that, that jump out and begin the race uh, like we are running to win it. But he said that it's not the one that runs the fastest. It's one that endure until the end. God wants you to be my disciples. But he said that you got to continue. Don't start off in the race and run. You remember what the scripture said? A man that put his hand to the plow and look his back is not worthy of the kingdom of God. God wants us to continue in his word. Once we start this race and we fail to continue the race, he says that that's an identifying factor that you are not his disciples. But he said, but if you continue in my word, then you are what? My disciples indeed. The surety of who we are is based on whether we have this continuity in our efforts to serve God and worship him in spirit and in truth. Those are the things that we have to have. He says that if you hang with me, you are my disciples indeed. But if you turn away and don't continue in me, then all of a sudden uh, that's the telltale of whether or not you are truly one of his disciples. Part B, truth and freedom, verse 32. He said that, and ye shall know the truth, mm -hmm. and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Jesus came to his disciples and he said that I am the way, yes. the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by mm -hmm. me. So he's saying that once you get to know me, once you continue in me, you will what? Know the truth. All right. And the truth shall make you free. free. We always misquoted and mis we said it will set you free, free. you know it, it, it will what make, make you, free. you free you know you can be set free but you can be what made free you can be caught up again okay hey look both I, I i i escaped from jail i done set myself free mm -hmm. but i might get caught again yeah. but the thing is when jesus he not he don't set you free he make you free, free. when you are made free then all of a sudden now you are what you, 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 you have something that will be part of you. Setting you free don't make nothing part of you, but when you're made free, you got all, my mother talked about substance. Every bit of the substance of your freedom are in you. Everything that you need is in you. Mm -hmm. You are being made free from the inside out. To set free is external, but to make free is what? Internal. internal. So those are the differences. He said that, and ye shall know Mm -hmm. The truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth shall make you free. free. See, the only thing that can really make you free is the truth. The truth. The truth will make you free. But the thing is, we live a lie, and we talked about it on uh, Friday evening. We talked about the, the uh, lack of the church being serious about the work that God has called us to do. And, and, and we need to be adamant about what God has called us to do. We need to be uh, no. 
the truth of God's word and how it relates to us in our lives. I think they said on Friday evening, we've taken uh, the, the whole thing about church and, and added, a, 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 we talked about the cross. What is the importance of the cross? The cross of Christ. He said, we've watered it down. Mm -hmm. We've watered it down the effects of what the cross can do in your life. We, he said, I think our, our lesson called it Kool-Aid. Okay. They said that they've taken what has great substance, what my mother talked about, and now you turn your Christianity with a Kool-Aid base. That means yeah, that, hey, right. look, it ain't real orange juice, but it tastes like orange. <laughs> See, that's, that's, when it, that's when you don't have the real faith. So right. Jesus said, I want to know, are you truly my disciples? Mm -hmm. Or are you just following me for the food? For the healing mm -hmm. of what you can mm -hmm. get. Mm -hmm. See, coming to church ain't all about what you can get. Mm -hmm. Coming to church is about you imparting, inputting something in mm -hmm. so that when you get something out. But we always want to draw out but without inputting something in. Mm -hmm. God is looking for what? Participants. Okay. He's looking for participants. He's not looking for people just want to come to church to observe. Come See, on. ain't nothing wrong with observation. Come to church to observe, but God wants you to be a what? Participant. Uh, uh, hey, I want to participate in anything that I join. But a lot of times you join, you just want to be uh, figuratively a member rather than a member that will be active and participating. Uh, verse 33, uh, believers react. As Jesus told them, if you continue in my word, uh, then uh, you, you are part of me. But then if you Know the truth. The truth will make you free. Mm -hmm. 33. Uh, they answered unto him, We be Abraham's seed, and we have never in bondage to any man. Mm -hmm. And how it said thou, you shall make us free. Mm -hmm. See, all, have you ever, I'm going to talk to some true believers this morning. Have, have you ever been just totally wrong about something and and all, all, all of a sudden, when you're caught wrong, you know you're wrong. And, but instead of admitting you're wrong, mm -hmm. you start throwing doubt and, 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 and start throwing things at other people. And, on, and, Grace, and instead of acknowledging your own wrong, right. they start throwing shade. That's the mm -hmm. word. Start throwing shade at other people. Yep. But instead of them saying, I, I, I need to understand what Jesus is talking about. So they became what? Defensive, didn't they? Mm -hmm. They came very defensive. They said, we are Abraham's seed. We, we've never been bondage to any man. And, and how said thou that you shall make us free? And, and I don't know whether, I think our, contact, our, 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 our commentary said this morning, I guess they forgot about those whole uh, 400 years of slavery and, and, and that, that, that all of this time they spent in Egypt. Mm -hmm. All of these years they were in bondage in Egypt and, and, and all of a sudden and, and you realize who came to Egypt? Mm -hmm. Joseph brought Jacob mm -hmm. to Egypt. Yeah, Abraham might have never been in slavery, but Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Joseph brought Jacob down to Israel and, and they, they spent 400 years in slavery and, and Moses had to set them free from their slavery. Mm -hmm. God set them free by using Moses, but the, they, they, they said that we, we, we've we never been in bondage to any man. <laughs> but Jesus is going to turn them around and help mm. them to understand that this external freedom that you are trying to, to, to justify can't be justified because internally you got some stuff. You're caught up in some things in your own personal life that internally that the only thing that can set you free is Jesus Christ. Amen. You, you, can't, you, you can't set free what's on the inside by doing something external. Mm -hmm. It has to happen. What happens in the heart got to be taken care of in the heart. What, what happens in the head needs to be taken care of in the head. And, and, and we need to understand that. So they, they, they're saying that we've never been in bondage. They, they, they try to get into denial. Is that what the word we use today? Mm -hmm. And Instead of uh, admitting their sin, they start throwing shade on someone else and then also living in denial, thinking that everything was all right. Our commentary says that, that uh, their identity as people was centered on the promises that they made to God, to Abraham. Therefore, 
to align with Abraham was an ethnic identity related to Israel, to God, by means of the covenant. But we have never been in bondage, failed to them to, to, to really understand what Jesus was talking about. Mm -hmm. If uh, uh, It was not as if Jesus' audience suddenly suffered amnesia. It was unclear whether they were willfully disregarding their collective history of where they were in bondage when they were in Egypt. In either case, their declaration showed a failure for them to follow what Moses had commanded them, but perhaps more significantly, their declarations was a failure to remember they had total dependence on God. See, when, when you start throwing shade, mm -hmm. you don't realize that the same mercy that saved me God had to use that same mercy to save you. Yep. Huh, huh, that, that, that same love that God had to save me, he used that same love to save you. So All we right. got to realize that sometimes we try to throw shade on others rather than just uh, 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 admitting, confessing that we have sin in our lives. So here's the question. The question, he said that, how can you tell us that you're going to make us free when we have the, 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 the lineage and the history of Abraham in our mm -hmm. lives. So the Jews questioned Jesus played, placing a burden of proof on him. So that question implied that they believed they were currently free. They thought that they were free because of, of who they were rather than free because of where their heart was. Amen. See, God, that, there is no respect of persons from God. He, he don't care who you are, who you were, where you come from, where, what are you doing for me now? Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that's the old saying is, what have you done for me lately? So don't worry about what your folk did. What have you done for me lately? Don't worry about what your Abraham did. What have you done for me? That's the emphasis that we have to put on. Our ownership is on us. We, we can't look to where we come from and our parents and our, uh, our lineage to try to cover us. We got to stand before God and to confess our sin before anything can happen in our personal lives. But Jesus responded in verse 34, sin and servitude. Jesus said that in the very I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is a servant to sin. See, whoever committed sin is a servant to sin. So anytime that you obey something, you become servant to that. All right. If you obey God, you become a servant to him. But if you obey sin, or, or you, you, you become a servant to sin. So he said that, hey, look, I'm not talking about your lineage. I'm talking about your disobedience to the word of God. All Moses right. gave you the word of God. Amen. But now you're telling us that, you, hey, look, you, you've been free. Mo, Abraham set us free. But you have sinned ever since. Mm. Moses gave you the commandment, but now you don't want to see your own faults. Okay. See, if a man confess his own sin, see, see you got to confess your own sin, not pointing fingers at other people or throwing shade at other people. Once you confess your own sin, then you're able to do something about it. But Jesus wanted them to know that you are a servant to sin. That's your issue. You, you, you're in bondage because of sin, not bondage because of an external uh, uh, government taking you and holding you. You're they said the worst enemy that you have is in a me. The, first in, the worst enemy that I have is in me. I got to deal with me. If I got to free myself from this own internal struggle that I have each and every day to be able to be free from what Jesus is trying to get them today. So let's look at temporary and permanent. Uh, verse 35. And the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. Jesus continued his response to this audience to use this household metaphor. The wealthy person household, a servant will work for the master. However, even as a part of the house, the servant's presence was uncertain. They could sell them off at a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to tell you that you're going to be in soul. He said that, hey, hey, as long as you're in that servant's house, you got to be obedient to who? The house that you're in. Amen. But by contrast, the master's firstborn son, heir 
receives all safety, security, and e e economic advantage of that household, no matter the situation. The son had ability to inherit what was from the father. Mm -hmm. But look, if you are only a servant in the house, you have no inheritance coming to you. Mm -hmm. huh? you got to receive the blessings from the landlord by his own grace and mercy that he's shown toward you. But he says here, Jesus pointed to his hearers to find a what? Not a temporary, but a permanent freedom that will free them from sin through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then you will receive the promise of the inheritance that was made to you by Abraham. But he says that without Jesus, I think we talked about it even on Friday evening in our study class, that, that uh, see, the, 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 the one dispensation ended and the next dispensation was started. But at the, at the end of that dispensation, you had to see something that had to change to make an impact on you. So he says that uh, unless you make a change, you are permanently, what, enslaved by this thing that you have in your life, this sin that you have in your life. But he said that the only thing that can take away that permanency of sin in your life is what? Jesus Christ. Huh? I can give you permanent freedom. Everything else is temporary. I can stop this for a while, but eventually it comes back. I can hinder this for a while, eventually I find myself falling for it. Mm -hmm. But he said, what can permanently set you free is what Jesus Christ can do for your life. Verse 36, son and freedom. He says that if the son therefore shall make you free, you are free indeed. Mm -hmm. So thing is, that, that, that temporary freedom that you can get from from dropping some vices in your life to, to stopping some things that you've been doing. All of those things are temporary. And God wants you to do those things. But the thing is, what can help you make a permanent change in your life is what is God, is Jesus the Christ. He says that if the Son shall make you free, you are what? Free indeed. The only permanent change that you can make in your life is to accept Jesus Christ, receive him. He says, if I abide in you, in you in me, you know, we got to get connected to the vine. That's what he tells the, the parable about the vine. I am the vine, you are the branches. You know, stay connected to the vine. As long as we stay connected to the vine, we shall be free indeed. But once we lose the connect, once we lose the continuity, once we knew the connectivity, we lose the source of what gives us the power to be free. Mm -hmm. Verse 37. What and why? Verse 37 says that I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Mm. He said that you are claiming that, that you've been set free by Abraham, and he said, well, I identify with that. I know, and I am also. I am one of Abraham's seed. He, he says, the problem is that, that I, I'm one of Abraham's seed. You're part of Abraham. Abraham is your father. He, he, you are one of Abraham's seed. But the problem is, you're trying to kill me. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to kill your brother? If I, I'm a son of Abraham, and you're a son of Abraham, why do you want to kill your brother? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He said, because thing is, that what I am preaching, what I'm at teaching, it, it has no place in you. Uh, the love of God has no place in you. So if the love of God has no place in you, that's what those sinful desires that you have to try to kill me. You would not kill me if you did not have those sinful desires in your life. If you had the same faith and belief that and that Abraham, look, 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 go back to the scriptures. Go back to the scriptures. Abraham believe in the promise of God. And by him believing in the promise of God, what Abraham was counted as what? Faith. Faithfulness. His faithfulness was based on his belief that the promise that God had made him that he would be what? This, the, 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 the stars in the sky, the sands of the sea. He would be father of many generations. And also, now he became the father of the promise. The, now Jesus did the fulfillment 
of the promise that God made unto Abraham. Nothing could be completed without this fulfillment. I, I, I think we, he said on the cross, it is finished. Mm -hmm. That means that he had finished, finished the fulfillment of the promise that God had made to Israel, but it could only happen through Jesus Christ. So he's telling them, you tried to kill me. You don't have any part in me. So if you don't have any part in me, you don't have any part in God, do you? Mm. See, we got to understand that you have no place in your heart for Jesus. You have no place in your heart for God. Because if you've seen the Father, he said, you've seen me. Mm -hmm. If you love the Father, you love me. He said, but why are you trying to kill me? But now you're telling me you're part of the promise that God made unto Abraham. Mm -hmm. If you made the promise, if God made the promise to Abraham, and if you received that promise, you would receive me also. All right. All right? Verse 38. It's our last verse. Verse 38. He said, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen of your father. Mm -hmm. uh oh. Oh, Lord. So, All right. Uh, I was looking at... Uh, uh, Storage Wars. Yeah. I was looking at Storage Wars wow. this week. And you always see the father and the son, they wear the t shirts and, and they're pretty much out of shape. And the father was changing his shirt. And the son said, Oh my God, don't let me see that. And the father said, Don't worry about it. The, 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 the apple don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> the apple don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> so Jesus said, Hey, yeah, you just like your father because the apple didn't fall too far from the tree. He says that, y'all, you are like your father. But then later on in our scripture, he said, look, your father must have been the devil. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus rough, baby. He said that I speak which I have seen of my father. My father. But that stuff you're talking, it's, it's, it's about your father. Yeah, it ain't he, mine. And, and he ain't talking about the big F, Father God. Yeah. He's talking about your father, the those spirits that, that are giving you the way that you are exposing yourself right now, that you are throwing shade on everybody else instead of, of confessing your own sin. When you start doing that, the devil, mm -hmm. he's the author of all of that stuff. Because the devil is the author of all of that stuff. He's the author of confusion. He wants us to think that God cannot save us. Jesus Christ cannot save us. He's trying to kill the promise. He's trying to destroy the promise that God has made. Uh, and look, God cannot lie. He mm -hmm. has to fulfill his promise. So he's saying here that instead of you speaking the words that I speak and receive them, that you just like your father the devil. Mm -hmm. Jesus pronounced a contrast. He said, on the other hand, Jesus gave them witness to his heavenly father that sent him. On the other hand, Jesus observed that his audience were more concerned about what they had been heard and seen from their father, the devil. Mm, huh? mm. Jesus' audience thought that their freedom was inevitable because of their ancestry, mm -hmm. where they came from, who their daddy was. Yeah. However, Jesus stated that they were deceived. Mm. You're fooling yourself thinking that God going to look at what your daddy did and what your mama did yeah. and bypass you. Yeah. You got to stand before God on oh, every yeah. man got to give an account of his own stewardship when they stand before God. So Jesus, he stated that they were deceived as long as they refused to listen and adhere to the teachings that God had sent through him. They would not experience true freedom. Mm. You cannot be free without receiving Jesus the Christ. All they right. would not know their heavenly father by not. See, he said that you've never seen God, but you've seen me. And if you see me, you've seen him. If you know me, you know him. If you don't know me, you don't know him. Huh? You don't know him at all. He said that until you get to know me, you will never get to know the Father. By failing to heed to Jesus, they fail to listen to God. If you won't listen to me, you are not listening to him either. Mm -hmm. He said that, hey, how are you going to listen to God huh, that you ain't never seen? Mm -hmm. But then you won't listen to me that you have seen. Mm -hmm. huh, how can you love God which you have never seen? Yes. 
but you can't love me that you see every day. All right. I think I posted on Facebook a few months ago that I, 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 I ain't, I, I, it's hard to understand how, how people just won't, just won't love you. You make a change in your life, they don't love you. Uh, you do something, they don't love you. They always try to find reasons for not to love you. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, not loving me is not a problem with me. All right. Not loving me is a problem with your heart. There you go. You need a heart change. Amen. You need to get that heart transfusion. Amen. That blood transfusion from Jesus yes. that what? It Pack your whole life. It'll change the way you see things. It'll change the way you set love. You It'll change you way to do. And my wife just said, it will set you free. In our conclusion on our lesson this morning, more, uh, more than discussions regarding the concept of freedom resolve around ideas of personal volition and, and responsibility and ability for people to express themselves without interference. Uh, but Jesus is less concerned about freedom in this uh, in this regard, Jesus was concerned about freedom and liberation from the uh, insidious grip of sin that you have in your life. Jesus' audience did not realize that they were experiencing the kind of bondage that they were in. While they thought that their ethnic uh, 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 heritage will free them from their sin, they were actually experiencing a greater bondage. Right. Their so-called freedom was an illusion based on a lie. Mm. Uh, we don't want to talk about that. That's no, in politics no, now. No. Uh, everything is based on not, not truths, but what? Lies. Yes. And Jesus spoke truth because he spoke the words of God, his Father, a declaration of true freedom. Freedom comes from the Father, leads to eternal life with the Son. Those who crave this freedom will seek Jesus and then his word and become his disciples. And then as such, his disciples will know the truth and the truth will make them free. A new day of freedom has been established for you and I through Jesus the Christ. So you need to receive it today. It's free. Freedom is free, but you got to receive it. Amen. It comes through only. You cannot pay for it. You cannot live to, to try to gain advantage. You can only give your life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And once you give to life to Jesus, receive him. He says, I abide in you and you, you in me. And then he will set you free. God Amen. bless you. Thank Amen. you all for joining us this morning. We got about 40 minutes into our lesson this morning. We continue to ask you to pray for us mm -hmm. here at On the Wall Ministries. Pray for our church at uh, Piney Hill Baptist Church. We pray for ministers, uh, Anthony and Clarissa Tinsley, our official board there. Pray for them. we still supportive of them, and we still pray for them and uh, talked to them yesterday, several of them, and we hope that uh, uh, they, they will continue to do what God has impacted on their hearts to do who will be the greater reward uh, of loving him. And we'll have that great getting up morning one of these days when God mm -hmm. calls us home. I want to be in the number. Do you? Mm -hmm. I want to be in the number. So our prayer today is, Heavenly Father, give us ears to hear and, and your truth and your heart uh, that we'll be able to love and receive your truth. May our attitudes, our words, and actions Reflect your truth so that we can bear witness to your son, Jesus Christ. May the world be illuminated by your truth, shining in and through us as we go out into the world to represent you and, and, to, and to show forth and, and to do the, the great witnessing to the world. You said go into all the world, witnessing to them that Jesus the Christ is Lord. Lord, we thank you for thank this day. You. We thank you for your freedom. We thank mm -hmm. you for Jesus Christ that set us free. We give your name praise, glory, and honor mm -hmm. for all that you have done in us and through us. And we ask this in the precious name of Jesus we do pray. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen. Our thoughts for the remember, freedom is found in the truth of Jesus. God bless you. We thank God for you joining us on this morning, and we just want to be just so thankful for you 
given us this opportunity to study and to teach and to receive the word of God. Mm -hmm. God bless each one of you. May we continue to work together to, to uplift the name of Jesus. Must, must we go out and spread this word to let others know about this freedom that we can have through our darling son, Jesus Christ. God bless you. May heaven ever smile upon you. Be blessed. We'll see you on next Sunday. Uh, well, join us on Friday evening for our Bible Institute. We're getting into the cross of Christ. Beautiful seasonal lesson. It's going to take us months to go through it. It's the longest study that we have. We're talking about the reality of the cross. Uh, the cruciality of the cross we studied about is crucial. The crux of, of our faith is Christ. And the, 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 the crucial part of our faith is what? The cross. If Christ hadn't went to the cross, we would have be still living in sin, not freed from the penalty and the power of sin, but thank God. So join us on Friday evening at 6 o'clock uh, on Facebook page here of Major Gilbert, Facebook page live. We also Spotify, uh, 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 iTunes. Uh, we also do uh, 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 Google uh, Google Podcasts, but YouTube, and also on our Facebook our uh, webpage uh, on the wall ministry. God bless you. May have another smile point. We'll see you all next week. Uh, we're excited about what God is doing and we're going to continue to pray for you. So we ask that you would pray for us. Be blessed. Yeah.